What is up guys, James Carter TV and it is time to continue my 2016 NFL Draft Recap Series that I'm doing for each and every team in the NFL recapping their 2016 NFL Drafts. I'll be doing that over the upcoming weeks. So with that said, let's get started today with the Seattle Seahawks, a team that needed to yet again have a really good draft and once again had a really good draft. This draft proved to me, as pretty much each and every year their drafts prove, why they are now one of the teams that you look out for the next decade and they are a perennial, a perennial, excuse me, Super Bowl contender because they are able to draft so well, so consistently, continue to bring in starters, people that fall down draft boards. They're able to pick them up. They're able to find players like Richard Sherman and Cam Chancellor that go down in the draft and turn them into Pro Bowl type players. And I think we can see some Pro Bowl type players that they draft in this draft in 2016. With that said, let's start with their first pick. 31st pick overall, Jermaine Ifteddy out of Texas A&M. And I've seen some people bashing this pick. I've seen some people saying, why do they pick Jermaine Effetti? And I'll give you this. Jermaine Effetti is not a finished product at this point. He is a little bit of a projection. He's a guy that you're going to have to bring in, coach up, teach him good technique, because right now he has some technique issues. He has some issues turning all of his strength and all of his tools into valuable, consistent production on the football field. But when you look at the Seattle Seahawks football team, and you look at the fact that right now, now their offensive line pretty much is in shambles. Russell Okung left in free agency, leaving Justin Britt and Gary Gilliam scheduled to start at left and right tackle respectively. This is a problem. And even inside, if Jermaine Effetti ends up being a guard for you, Inside the offensive line for the Seahawks, that is also a question mark as well. Outside, uh, ever since they traded Max Unger as well. I mean, there's th this whole offensive line is pretty much an issue right now. And Russell Wilson is finally ascending into an elite quarterback. In fact, right now, to me, he is an elite quarterback in the NFL. I think last season he proved that ascending to that title. And now that he's ascended to that point, though, if you want to see him grow even further... You have to protect this guy. They do it with Jermaine Effetti. You needed to draft an offensive tackle, and I give it a B plus only because I believe Jason Spriggs and Cody Whitehair are both better prospects than Jermaine Effetti to me, and I would have preferred to seen one of them go here instead of Jermaine Effetti, but I can understand why you went Jermaine Effetti. You needed to fill that right tackle need, and you filled it here, or left, right tackle, wherever he's going to play, we'll find out in the upcoming weeks and months to come. Now, we move on to the second round, 49th pick overall, defensive tackle Jerron Reed out of Alabama. I can't believe this guy was available, and neither could the Seahawks, because they had to move up to draft him here, and I think it's a great pick. I mean, this is a guy I had scheduled to go maybe in the, the teens. Uh, he was teens in my draft board. I thought he was a player that was the best player uh, uh, draft eligible on that Alabama defensive line, a guy that still has a lot of potential and ability to to improve upon where he was. I liked him better than Ashawn Robinson, his teammate right next to him. I even liked him better than Jonathan Allen, who stayed at Alabama this season. A guy, with, a guy with great potential that can fill the void if Michael Bennett starts to slide a little bit later on in his career. They lost Brandon Meebane in free agency. No problem, because we just drafted Jerron Reed out of Alabama, who can help our defensive front. This gets an A for me. Next, we have the third round, 90th pick overall. Running back C.J. Prosize out of Notre Dame. I love this pick. Last year, undrafted free agent Thomas Rawls came in for you, had over 250-yard uh, game, one game, had another nice game, another nice game, and then he got injured. And you wonder, you, you think he's a franchise running back for you. You think that. But even though you think that, it's nice to solidify your running back position. I no longer have faith in Christine Michael. I am of the belief that if he would have done something, he would have done it by now. So let's solidify our running back position just in case Thomas Rawls isn't what we believe he is. We have yet another running back here that really fits our offense in terms of being a versatile guy. Guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield and make some versatile plays, some jet sweeps, and all kinds of stuff and fun we can have. Some outside runs that we can do with C.J. 
PGA Pro size that you saw with Percy Harvin when he was there. You see with Tyler Lockett as well now that he's here. They like to do some stuff to the outside. CJ Pro size has a spy, uh, the speed and agility to do that. Really like this pick. I give it an A minus only because there were some running backs that were better on the board, but it's still a really good pick here for the Seattle Seahawks. Next, we move on to tight end Nick Vanette out of Ohio State. This was a guy that last year in the 2014 college football season was behind Jeff Hewerman. I believe that's how you pronounce it, out of Ohio State. Hewerman was mainly the blocking guy, and Nick Vanette was mainly the receiving guy. Then this year, Nick Vanette in 2015 stepped up, was more of that blocking tight end, and you could see really good ability there. So this is a guy that you can juxtapose with Jimmy Graham. Have Jimmy Graham be that big receiving type and then have Nick Vanette be that blocking guy. But hey, don't you worry because he will slide out. Uh, he will leak out on play action plays, leak out and still catch touchdown passes from Russell Wilson. I think he's going to be a great fit for this Seattle Seahawks offense. Give them another tight end to use besides Luke Wilson or Zach Miller. They're old. Who cares? Now you have a legitimate tight end that can block, that can catch. I really like Nick Vanette. They get him in the third round, late third round. It's an A from me. Next, we have 97th pick overall. This is a pick that I like the least, pretty much of the whole draft. And that's Reese Adiambo or Adiambo out of Boise State. I think I just said the same thing twice. However, you pronounce it out of Boise State. I think he was a little bit of a reach here. Again, I understand that you needed to fill your offensive line, but I'm not a big Reese Odiambo fan. I think he still has a lot of things to clean up heading up into the NFL, but I, I like the idea of fixing your offensive line, and even though it's a little bit of a reach, I, I can let it slide, and it's a B- minus for me, but this is the worst, uh, th this is uh, actually the second worst pick from the side of Seahawks to me, because we move on to the next pick, and this is where things got a little bit... Uh, okay, so fifth round, they take Quentin Jefferson out of Maryland, defensive tackle, this guy really didn't show me much on tape. Uh, this is a guy that came in uh, playing defensive tackle for Maryland. Kind of slow at times. Didn't think he had a very high motor. Yes, yeah, the fifth round, but I thought they could have done more. There's some nice potential here, but I only give it a B. Then we move on, still in the fifth round. 171 pick overall. Alex Collins out of Arkansas. Now, you just heard me a couple minutes ago talking about how much I love the CJ Pro Size pick. Let's solidify our running back position. Okay, it's solidified. You don't need to solidify it further now. I mean, also, I think this Seattle Seahawks team, I really wish they would have addressed this strong safety position because I am of the belief, and probably Seahawks fans are too, Camp Chancellor is probably not going to be here much longer. You guys really should have looked for a strong safety at this spot, or maybe even earlier. You take Alex Collins, yet another running back. Now you have Rawls, CJ Pro Size, Christine Michael. Is Alex Collins going to make the roster? And when you're talking about the fifth round, you want to get guys that can make the roster still. Now, Alex Collins, though, I will give him this, and I'll give the Seahawks this. He has a value here. I mean, this is a guy I thought was going to go in the third round. So from a talent perspective, the talent is here. I just question out whether or not he's going to be able to make the roster. And in the fifth round, you still should get guys that will make the roster that can make an impact on special teams at the least. And I'm not sure that's the case with a uh, Alex Collins. I give it a C+. Plus. We move on, though, and this is where they really finish strong. They take Joey Hunt out of TCU. I give this an A. I, I liked what he did at TCU, a nice starting center for them for quite a while. He's going to, again, help solidify the Seahawks offensive line. That was a big thing for them. This guy was a value here. Love the pick. I give it an A-. minus. Next, we have seventh pick, wide receiver Kenny Lawler out of California. People thought this guy was going to go in the third round, fourth round. He goes all the way down to the seventh Seahawks wide receivers right now aren't great. Tyler Lockett showed potential. Doug Baldwin finally came on. But besides that, you know, you want a little more. Jermaine Curse was re-signed, but I don't have much confidence in him. Chris Matthews is gone, although he really didn't do much in the regular season anyway. Now you have the ability to bring on Kenny, Kenny Lawler, develop him a little bit, and help him get some pass from Russell Wilson. And he's of great value here. I give it an A. But overall, you look at this Seattle Seahawks draft. I think it was a really, really, really good draft for the Seattle Seahawks. You got starters in Jerron Reed and Jermaine Effetti, 
probably. And you also picked up a potential starter in CJ Procise, a potential starter in Reese Odiambo, Joey Hunt, a developmental guy in Kenny Lawler. I don't love the Quinton Jefferson or the Alex Collins picks, but overall, it's not an A. But it is an A-minus draft for me for the Seattle Seahawks. I calculated. For those of you that don't know, I concocted a grading system, a GPA grading system, based on all these grades. And it came out, it spat out a 3.48, which is about a B-minus to an A, or a B-plus, excuse me, to an A-minus. I'm going to give it an A-minus, so when I look at it, it is an A-minus draft. They got enough starters here, considering the fact that you're taking, or you're picking in 31st, uh, in every round, for the most part, I mean, you maneuver and whatnot. This is a really good, solid draft for the Seattle Seahawks. And yet again, proving why they continue to be a perennial Super Bowl contender ever since 2013. So there you go. James Carter TV. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm out. Peace.